Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Skyrim Special Edition Modded. We're here with Arturius Tarinus, the blacksmith, and Art has been busy. We have been busy. We've been working on all kinds of things. Uh, I'm just sitting here right now, and I'm studying this model. And I keep studying, I keep looking at these diagrams, and as you may notice, if I, let me just get up here, uh, uh, and uh, you may notice there's no sphere thingy here on the ground and that's because I've moved it into the workshop so let's go take a look in the workshop and I'll show you what I've been working on okay so <laughs> so I got this thing going right and uh, it's a work in progress okay so you know uh, don't judge um, it takes time if you want to learn a new skill and this Dwimmer technology is something else so I've got this uh, I don't know what you would call it maybe you would call it a, uh, a corpse <laughs> of one of these sphere things and I've moved it in here because I just wanted to you know be able to get some close-up looks at it and what I did was I used another one similar uh, to work on and I started putting it together and I've got a lot of uh, different things going on here so uh, one of the things I'll probably be doing uh, in the next little bit is I need to do some more work on this thing. Uh, as you can tell, if you look really closely here, uh, I'm getting some of the stuff right. I've got some of the features, I think. If I look, yeah, I think it's getting there. Some of the stuff is a little off, though. I still haven't figured out these doohickeys over here, and uh, I probably need to shave some more uh, metal off of this. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on this for a little bit, and uh, I'll see what I can come up with, and we'll be right back. Well guys, that took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. Let me just uh, put my wrench away there. Uh, but, let's take a look. Yep, looks pretty good. Now, uh, I think I've got just about everything where it's supposed to be. We've got this guy put together just like this one was. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble with these uh, joints back here. And uh, this thing did not want to fit. This little uh, cover piece right here. Uh, yeah, this piece right here. And I just kept at it. And uh, I think it was a little bit too big. So uh, so I just kept messing with it a little until it seemed to uh, turn out okay. And uh, I don't know about you guys. But I think my carving skills are getting better and better. This guy's starting to look very similar to the original now we have another problem though uh, it's really stiff and doesn't seem to want to move very much so I think I'm going to have to figure out some uh, let's see I'll probably grab some of this uh, uh, oil that I have in here yep got some of this dwarven oil uh, let's see can I take that yep Alrighty, so let's let's let me grab a couple of these. I'll grab like five, and uh, <clears throat> and let me see if I can come up with something, and I'll be right back. 
All right, guys, we're back. And uh, it's been about another day, and I've been scratching my head. Scratching my head, yep. Uh, I went ahead and uh, got some sleep. So if we just head over here uh, to the workshop, I went ahead and cleaned up. I got rid of the, uh, I got rid of that other sphere that was there. Now we've got our guy. This is the one that we've been working on. And, uh, I swear to you, it looks like everything that I can think of is, uh, is good to go on this guy. Let me just, uh, let me just put my goggles on real quick, real quick here. Shed some light on the situation. Uh, see here? See there? I even got this, uh, bow thingy working. I mean, it's got spring to it and everything. Um, I'm able to move the joints around a little bit. I put some of that dwarven oil all over the thing. And I just can't seem to figure out how to uh, get it going. It looks like there's a, a vent down here. Maybe something to do with that. Uh, yep, but I am not 100% sure. However, I do have something interesting to show you. And let's head back over to the bedroom. So, last night, before I went to bed, I'm just going to shut this. No one else needs to know about this. Um, last night, I was taking a bath, and I spilled water all over the floor. And I heard something. Uh, I noticed the water was kind of trailing over this way, and it sounded like the water was falling. You know, like down a drain or something like that. So, I came over here, and, and look at this. There's a trap door. There is a trap door there. Look, let me move this rug out of the way so you can see it better. I'll just grab it. Yep, we'll just slide this rug over just a little bit. And look at that. There is a trap door. Now, can you imagine how awkward it is to <laughs> find a trap door in your bedroom after all this time? Now, uh... I'm not going to lie, I was super curious, so I have gone ahead and uh, went down there. But I'm going to take you along with me now, and I'm going to show you what I found. So uh, let's just jump, jump on in here. So there's the trap door from our bedroom. And look at this. There is a room down here. And there is a chest over here, uh, but there wasn't anything in it unfortunately uh but but this has given me some ideas guys so i think what we're going to do is is uh i'm going to grab vorstag and i'm going to grab argus and we're going to head back to nishuenzil and grab some supplies because i have an idea of what to do with this room and i think it might be just a trick to help us get our Dwarven Sphere going. So I'm going to work on some stuff. And I don't know how long it's going to take. But I'm going to work on some stuff. And I'll be back when I have something to show you. Alright guys, we're back again. <laughs> we're back in the bedroom again. And uh, it's been a couple of days now since I last... Uh, uh, parted with you and uh, we were able to carry back quite a few supplies now uh, Argus and uh, Vorstag they're very loyal and uh, pretty much don't ask too many questions but they were really curious about what, what I was working on in here and uh, with all of the parts and things that I, that I drug in here and, and stuffed down this uh, little hole uh, it was pretty tough to keep this a secret, and but I do want to keep it a secret even from them, because uh, what I'm doing here, well, it's a little bit dangerous, and uh, what we're doing is, is we're making fuel. We're going to make some sphere fuel. Now, I would like to, before I show you uh, what I did down there, I would like to throw out a little bit of a disclaimer, and that is... Uh, as an alchemist, uh, actually, come on, let's go. Let's go look at the. Uh, let's go look at the alchemy table. See this alchemy table here. This is what gave me the idea. See this. This is called an alembic. 
And the way this works is, is you put the stuff in up here in the liquid form that you want to get the essence out of. And then uh, you put a little bit of fuel in this heater underneath here. And that heats up and it starts to vaporize the, uh, what do you call it? The stuff that's in here, the liquid. And what happens is, is it will accumulate, the steam will accumulate on the top surface. And then as it cools, the steam will condense and turn back into a liquid and float down into this doohickey down here. Now, this is a what's called a uh, double distillation alembic. And the way this works is this will heat up and do the distillation process and the stuff will come down here. It collects inside of here. Uh, let me put my wrench away. Sorry about that. And as it comes down, this will continue to cycle and heat up. And this bottom boiler which it is uh, sometimes referred to as a bubbler because of the bubbling noise that it makes, this will begin to heat up and redistill the essences a second time. And then those distillates are what travels through this little hose. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a little bit dark. But see that little hose right there? So the secondary distillation uh, distillates will travel through that uh, hose right there and down into this uh, collection mechanism and the way this one looks like it looks like this one actually will uh, condense even a third time and get the uh, essence down here in the alchemy uh, mixing table now that is pretty much how the distillation process works when it comes to alchemy if you would like to distill other things and perhaps if you're making fuel you would like to distill alcohol and alcohol is a thing here in uh, Skyrim and Tamriel of course you know we all love mead and wine uh, however I am for the purposes of fueling this guy back here I am interested in making some dwarven sphere fuel because I have a hunch that that is what it's going to take to get this guy going. Now, why did I say all that? Because I want you guys to understand something. And that is, depending on where you are. And let me actually throw this out here as not Arturius. Let me throw this out here as see you later. So, uh, just for safety and, and, uh, and legal purposes, I want you guys to understand that what I'm about to show you uh, actually does work in real life. But, depending on where you live, it's probably illegal unless you have a license. So please, please do not try this at home, okay? So enough of that. Uh, let's go ahead and show you uh, what we came up with. So we're utilizing our new, <clears throat> we're utilizing our new secret space. See, poor stag, he's listening. Uh, down here so I'm just gonna pop down here into the little basement area and uh, and I'm gonna show you what we set up if you look behind me back here <laughs> we have we have something it's a thing it's a thing so yeah it's been a few days since I saw you guys but it has been long enough for me to put together this distillation device this is my dwimmer distillation device and uh let me just run you through what we've got going on here so we've got a boiler and uh if we look in the boiler uh interface i'm going to call this this is the boiler interface you can see that we have a capacity of 54 percent so we're it's a little over half full right now and Yep, it's not fluctuating, so it looks like we're maintaining a pretty steady 78 degrees uh, temperature in the boiler. And you can see I've got some flames going on down here underneath. Alright, now in these barrels over here, these are empty right now, but this is what I did. I took some potatoes and some uh, different ingredients, uh, some uh, uh, little bit of some uh, mushrooms, different kinds of mushrooms, 
uh, just to get the fungus to get the reaction going and I created a quick fermenting and by the way guys it totally stinks down here I mean it smells horrible it really it smells like a brewery uh, but anyway so I slowly bucketed the wash after it had fermented into the boiler and uh, we're heating the boiler up now and I've got this water barrel down here and one of the cool things about having the water barrel down here is uh, if I want to I can always uh, take a quick drink if I get thirsty from the water barrel so it has water coming in and uh, so what's happening is remember the alembic that I showed you upstairs you heat up the liquid and then the vapor goes up and starts to condense so here we have our first primary condenser and uh, the way this one is working is is that only the most refined uh, steam is getting through from the uh, from the wash and the rest of it is falling back down and then re uh, re going back again until it can make it past this uh, primary uh, condenser and then that steam goes over here and floats down into this double condenser device and the way I have this hooked up is there is a pump up here that is pulling water out of the top of the barrel and that water is flowing down through the uh, double condenser and then it comes out uh, this uh, outer jacket out of this bottom ring of the outer jacket and back down into the uh, bottom of the barrel here so this water basically just uh, circulates through the uh, secondary condenser and then that steam that's left out well there's not much left over it pretty much comes out as a uh, liquid and it comes down into uh, the condenser output so uh, let me see it's a pretty slow process yep you can see we're still at at 54 percent capacity so out of the other, uh, what was it, 46% uh, uh, of filling that thing up, let's see what we've come up with so far. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10 units now of ethanol. And this ethanol is what we're going to do uh, use to mix with, we're going to mix this with some of that dwarven oil and I've already gone and done a little bit uh, just for a test and I put it over here so I've got some uh, I've got some spare dwarven oil and here we go this is our first 10 units of spear fuel so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and uh, let's see it's here in our yep right there we've got 10 units of spear fuel so again uh, I just want to let you guys know this pretty much is how an ethanol still works. Uh, please don't try this at home. Uh, I cannot be and, and, and will not be held responsible for any of your uh, scientific experiments <laughs> that you would like to do at home. However, this was a lot, a lot of fun to uh, put together, you guys. I had a lot of fun. Uh, this, this took, uh, hmm, I don't even want to tell you how many hours it took me. Uh, to put this thing together and to uh, figure out how these uh, condensers work and uh, but as you can see there's steam coming out everywhere and there's fire and steam and heat and stinky smelly everything and it's so cool I love it I'm totally totally loving this setup down here so I think what I'm gonna do is uh, for the rest of this room uh, I might actually make it into a, a little bit of a hangout just for me privately down here and uh, one thing I did test out before was that uh, no one else can come down here uh, it's just me so even if uh, even if the uh, the dog is following uh, uh, vigilance or any of the, the guys that are, are following along with us if we just need a moment of uh, you know solitude then we can just come down here and uh, they won't follow us through the trapdoor, which is really cool. I like to uh, have my privacy, and the sounds of the pumps and the steam and that sort of stuff uh, going, I find it really soothing. And I really, I really enjoy uh, just hanging out down here. 
So I'm going to let that go, and uh, we're going to let it finish up. And uh, let me just check the temperature one more time. Okay, yep. Uh, looks like that regulator is working pretty good because we're, we're keeping it right steady at 78 degrees, which is just perfect for uh, for our ethanol. Do we have any more uh, new units yet? Uh, no, looks like we're looks like we're still working on our next unit uh, for output. So anyway, um, all right, you guys, there's only one more thing left to do, and that is to see if uh, the fuel will work to get this uh, sphere going so before we go I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna attempt to light the fire so cool all right guys so here goes nothing I am going to uh, just come right over here and uh, get down and see if I can uh, reach into this uh, compartment over here and I will uh, put the fuel in and we'll light it up and let us see what happens oh there's something happening oh this is awesome oh my gosh is it working you guys as soon as I put the fuel in that it just it just lit up and the whole thing just collapsed and went into a ball this is amazing let's see let's see what happens if I pull my wrench out Wow would you look at this guy well yeah uh, it appears that I have uh, successfully reconstructed a Dwemer construct and uh, we're going to have to figure out a name for him. Right now, he's just Art's Dwemer Construct, uh, or Art's Dwim D Dwarven Sphere. Uh, but I definitely want to come up with a better name, so I would really love for you guys to help me come up with a name for this guy. And uh, I think he's going to be really cool joining us along on our travels. And I am so, so excited, you guys. Look at this. Look at this. We've got a sphere. Now. Let's see. What can he do? Uh, activate follow command. Access cargo compartment. Command execute. Let's try. Command execute. Let's see if I can get him to roll over there. That is really cool. Look at that. I can t tell him to go over there. Go over there. And can I call him to come back? Come back. Come back over here. Come back. Come back. There you go. Look at that. He's following commands. He has a cargo uh, compartment. Access cargo compartment. And look at that. There's his fuel. He's got his tin sphere uh, fuel in there he hasn't used much or any uh much yet but uh, i'm imagining this guy is uh you know he's pretty fuel efficient i'm imagining uh dwimmer technology and all so let's see uh what else activate follow command oh, he makes some really cool noises let's see will he follow us He's following us. What happens if we get into danger? Still standing here. Yeah, he looks like he's ready to go in case we get into some danger. Come on, buddy, don't get... Oh, okay, well, maybe he's a little bit... Uh... Yeah, maybe he needs a little bit of assistance sometimes. Looks like you might get stuck on things a little bit with those uh, rolly round bits there. But uh, I don't know about you guys. I kind of want to take him for a spin around town. So uh, let's head out and see. Now, I don't want people getting scared. So why don't you go ahead and uh, collapse back down again there. Very good. And let's see how he does around town. How do you do on the stairs? How am I doing? I don't want to fall off of here either. 
Yeah, it looks like he doesn't have a problem with the stairs either. How's your pathing? Yeah, it looks like he's, uh, it looks like he's doing pretty good. Let's head down this way. Let's go show, uh, Koznak. Mm -hmm. right. Glad you're here. Oh, I'm glad you're here, too. Look at this. Look, I've got a sphere. Oh, yeah, look at him. He's avoiding it. Kosnak, you're never going to believe this. Look what I got working. Look, it's a sphere. It's one of those Dwimmer spheres. What do you think about that? Still standing here. Uh, I take it he's not too very much interested. Anyway, guys, this has been an awesome episode. And we have a working Dwarven sphere at our command. Let's see. Can I... Uh, can I command execute? Command execute. Uh, let's see. I got to be careful. I don't want him to attack anybody. Uh, let's have him go over there. Look at that. That is so neat. Will he come back to us? Come back over here. Where are you going? No, don't go that way. <laughs> Come back. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, activate follow command. Let's put away our ridge. <laughs> All right, let's get going. All right, guys. This bit of blast. And uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with us. I'm really sorry it took me so long to get to this episode. But uh, I'm sure as many of you uh, may know. Uh, it took a while to get this fear going. And uh, this episode took a really long time to make. And I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. And I hope you come back and hang out with us again. For some, uh, some more adventures. I am Arturius Tarinus the Blacksmith. I am also Thane of the Reach and Mark Hearth, and I'm also, see you later guys, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye! Say bye-bye! <laughs>